Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today's episode is brought to you by Women's Rights News on Facebook and Instagram. Here is the Feisty News for Women. On June 24th, 2022, the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, the landmark 1973 Supreme Court decision that affirmed the constitutional right to abortion. The day was filled with sorrow and grief as intelligent men and women mourned the freedom we lost. This blow to women's rights in the U.S. is devastating and surreal. Protests around the country were quickly organized by women's rights groups and social media influencers tried to make sense of the situation by crying out. Some even opted to lighten the mood by creating a few laughs. Voluntary vasectomies among men have increased in the weeks since the overturn of Roe, while women have decided to stockpile contraceptives in anticipation of what is to come. The clear villain of the overturn of Roe versus Wade is Justice Clarence Thomas, who wrote that the Supreme Court must revisit and overrule past landmark decisions that legalize the right to obtain contraception, the right to same-sex intimacy, and the right to same-sex marriage. During an interview on CBS This Morning with Gail King, former presidential candidate Hillary Clinton warned the nation about Thomas, saying, I went to law school with him. He's been a person of grievance for as long as I've known him. Resentment, grievance, anger. Well, that makes sense, Hillary. At 74 years old, Clarence Thomas has been risen through the ranks of the country's highest court and made a name for himself, obviously battling racism and having to prove himself time and time again in a world that constantly told him that he was inferior. To achieve greatness in spite of that takes impressive discipline, a type of discipline that could lead to resentment, grievance, and anger, just like Hillary described. Unfortunately, a man who wants everyone to live by the same rigid standards he had to live up to is not a good leader. A true leader wants the most purposeful outcome for all involved, regardless of her own personal agenda or hangup. In the case of Clarence Thomas's leadership, we didn't choose wisely. We must be certain not to make the same mistake again. In other news, 51 migrants were found dead inside an abandoned tractor trailer truck in Texas this week. Of the 39 men and 12 women who died, 22 were Mexican, seven were Guatemalan, and two were from Honduras. They were all being transported to work in the US. The incident has been recorded as the greatest loss of life on record from a human trafficking attempt in the United States. What is human trafficking and what can we do about it? Let's chat with Julie Walton, the Strategic Engagement Officer at Global Child Advocates, a human trafficking prevention program with operations in Thailand and Myanmar. Welcome to the Feisty, Julie. Help us to better understand what human trafficking is and how your organization, Global Child Advocates, tackles the issue. So thank you for having me on the Feisty, T. Erica. This is such an important topic, and I'm just delighted to share with your audience. Trafficking is one of those things that seems so big. So we're going to zoom in to where we work in Thailand, which is one of the world's worst areas for trafficking. We're right on the border of Myanmar, where our city is a source, transit, and destination hub for labor and sex trafficking. So human trafficking is the exploitation of an individual, whether that's a child, a man, or a woman, by another individual for profit or gain. And so this can look like a forced labor contract. We've run into this where a young man will try and flee from Myanmar to Thailand, and he's met with what seems like a kind offer of help, but actually he's being coerced into a labor contract that he's unaware of. Maybe he's signing a document he can't read, and now he's conscripted into labor for far less than what a living wage would be. And he's stuck in that contract until he works it off. 
We see this in other countries where women are brought in to be helpers in a house and their passports are confiscated upon arrival until they work off their contract, but they're not told what the terms are of that. And that is being done for someone else's profit or gain, as opposed to my employment, which is done where I'm receiving the wages of that. So trafficking, it can be the moving of people from one location to the other or the forced exploitation whether through labor trafficking or human trafficking for another individual's profit or gain. One of the communities we work in is an entire community that lives in the city dump. We also work in really impoverished areas that some may describe or you may be familiar with the term a slum. So at times, culturally within Thailand and in many parts of the world, children will begin working at earlier ages than we typically see in the States. But at times there can be a risk if that child is being taken to another city or another place. And so we help parents suss out those opportunities so that they're not sending their children into what might look like a good employment situation, but maybe that's a young woman who's far too young to be working away from home. We've had clients that have been sent to work at as young as eight years old. That's not a safe place for a child to be. And that is trafficking in a technical sense, because again, that money, that's a child who shouldn't be earning money. That's a child who should be protected within their family. GCA, we are secondary characters in this story. The primary hero in the anti-trafficking fight is the family. We work diligently to identify families that may be at risk of separation or even vulnerable to orphanage recruitment, and we bolster and sustain them through crisis intervention, concrete support, even employing them. I believe if you care about anything in society, whether that's homelessness, incarceration rates, addiction, All of those things have their roots in childhood trauma. So if you want to intervene to fix anything in society, and I recognize that's a bold statement, but it's true and the facts would bear it. The most effective way to intervene is in a child's life and make sure they are safe and nurtured. Thank you so much, Julie, for your work with improving our society. This is so important. Please support the prevention of human trafficking with GCA by visiting their website at globalchildadvocates.org and offering a donation. In other news, have you checked your 401k statement lately? 401k statements provide individuals with information about investments and total savings that are typically used to fund retirement. In a bid to give a wake up call to the reality of your savings, a new report called the Lifetime Income illustrations will be included in the statement, which will show an estimate of how much income you would receive each month for the rest of your life, starting at age 67. For example, if you have $500,000 in your 401k at the age of 67, not including interest, taxes, and fees or inflation, assuming your life expectancy of 20 additional years, the lifetime income illustration will estimate that you will receive $1,388 per month for 20 years. The goal of this financial alert is to help younger people to realize that they need to create a stronger plan for income for a more comfortable lifestyle later. We can't depend on social security and government assistance. What will you do to ensure that your later years are well taken care of? If you have a solid plan, send me an email at thefeistynews.com to let me know. Share your wisdom. Well, it's time for a break. Is a man responsible for kids that aren't his? What exactly is the formula for forgiveness? These exciting stories after the break. Don't miss it. Hi, Jazz here from JD Bath Co. My mission started with the creation of a vagina-friendly bath soak, Bomb AF, my love letter to women, but it didn't stop there. JD Bath Co. now has an entire line of clean beauty products made for sensitive skin. From our handmade soaps, to our skin conditioning and clearing oils, to our best-selling organic rose oil, or one of our many organic, vegan, cruelty-free body creams, or the newly added line of body scrubs.
JD Beth Co. is located in the heart of Atlanta, Georgia, and we would love to have you shop with us. Come check us out at www.jdbathco.com. Look forward to seeing you. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the Feisty News for Women. Girl, guess what? Did you hear about the viral dilemma making the rounds on social media this week? Well, girl, a woman uploaded a video of herself berating the father of one of her children because he brought McDonald's for only his child, even though she has three other children in the house. Who's in the wrong here? Well, she is definitely in the wrong. Number one, you cannot force a man to provide food for all of your children when he never agreed to do that. Number two, recording yourself berating a man and uploading it to social media, intentionally trying to bully him into doing what you want him to do is abusive and it makes you look stupid. The first time he bought food for just one child, I would have sent the child with him to eat it and ask him to give me a heads up next time he was bringing food so that I could give him enough money to ensure all of the kids could have a treat. And he probably would not have singled out his son when he was around his girlfriend's kids. But this is a teachable moment. We understand that this isn't really about providing food for all of the children. And it's more about not allowing any child to feel left out or abandoned, which could impact their self-esteem. If the father does not realize the impact of his presence on all of the kids, just explain that by buying one child food, the others may begin to feel like outcasts and see if he cares to change his behavior. If he doesn't, as a woman, you just have to make up for it by boosting the esteem of the children in other ways. In other news, we're living the feisty life and sometimes it means facing our traumas head on. In this edition of The Feisty Life, Angela explains how she managed to escape a life of alcohol abuse and self-harm. Hey, Angela, what did you do to turn your life around? Hi, my name is Angela, and I learned how to forgive. As a child, I was um, abused, and that set off um, a whole cycle of self-sabotage. I became anorexic. I um, developed a drinking habit at age 13. I became very promiscuous. I had no respect for myself. Um, as an adult, this led to picking men who did not treat me well. One in particular was my fa my daughter's father who physically abused me. Um, and I did finally get the courage to leave him. However, in 2015, I experienced a near-death experience that left me very sick, left me broke and homeless with my two children. And I realized um, as I was healing the physical that I also really needed to heal um, and forgive on an emotional level. So I was healing from a toxic mold incident. And while I was sitting in the sauna for 45 minutes at a time, I realized I could be using this time to use my spiritual techniques that I had learned. When Western medicine failed us at the beginning of our illness, I turned to alternative forms of healing, which was led me down the spiritual path of mysticism, shamanism, Reiki, astrology, advanced healing techniques. And so when I would sit in the sauna, I would start envisioning um, bringing the people in who hurt me and I would actually talk to them. I would tell them that I forgive them and I release them from my life and the pain. And not only that, but I use my spiritual tools to um, go back in time and actually picture myself at the scene and change the trajectory of what happened. And so I would imagine or choose another way. And by doing that over and over and over again, I finally overcame not only my fear, but I also learned to forgive on a really high level. You are not forgiving, you know, what happened. What you're simply doing is forgiving your, when you, when I call them into my mind, I tell them, you know, I see you, I see that you were harmed as a child or you were harmed as an adult. And this is the only way that you know, but I am forgiving you for myself. I am releasing you and I'm no longer going to be scared of you. I need to release you and this heavy weight from my life so that I can move on with my life. 
And since I did that, I have never experienced any issues of addiction. I, I completely changed. I did a 180. I respect myself so highly. I would never let anybody treat me in that way again. But I realized until you actually look within and find your wounds and choose to heal them, you will continue living in victimhood when you could take your power back by simply forgiving. And that's not doing them any favors. It's doing you a favor because you are releasing that negative energy and you're allowing the spaciousness to open and bring in positivity. So that's how I learned how to forgive and how to move past my childhood wounds that could have led me down a really, really bad path in life. And instead, I'm living the life of my dreams. Thank you so much for reminding us that it really is possible to hear from trauma, Angela, if you really want to. Well, thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty. 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 Welcome to the Feisty. feisty. feisty.